Hello and welcome back. Uh, today I will talk on diabetic retinopathy. And again, I will repeat my audience is undergraduate students of MBBS and general practitioner. Diabetes mellitus affects the eye, and diabetic retinopathy occurs in 90% of the people who are having diabetes for at least 10 years and whether uh, it is controlled or uncontrolled it doesn't matter uh, diabetes mellitus uh, does cause retinopathy in any case uh, though in controlled cases it may uh, appear later but besides the good control 90% uh, of the people uh, with diabetes will develop diabetic retinopathy uh, when we talk about the pathogenesis of diabetic retinopathy, uh, the main and core feature is that uh, there is e there is one parasite for each endothelial cell of medium and small sized blood vessels all over the uh, all over the retina. And in diabetic retinopathy, the these parasites, which are the supporting cells, are damaged, and they cause the for further uh, signs and symptoms. Which we will, which I will discuss in this coming talk. Classification: There are two types of uh, classification. One is based on ETDRS study, which was done once, and other is conventional. I will talk on conventional uh, classification. In con conventional classification, it has got three stages. Number one, background diabetic retinopathy. Number two, pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And number three, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Uh, now I will come one by one to the important signs and the um, only signs which are present in each stage. Number one, background diabetic retinopathy. It has got uh, four signs, four uh, very important diagnostic signs. Number one, microaneurysms. Number one, microaneurysms. Number two, intraretinal hemorrhages. Number three, retinal edema. And number four, hard exudates. That's it. These are the four signs which you see on ophthalmoscopy. And uh, if you see them, you can easily diagnose that it's stage uh, one that is background diabetic retinopathy. Microaneurysms are very small and they uh, are usually not visible with um, indirect ophthalmoscope. So we use um, uh, direct ophthalmoscope or we uh, use slit lamp endoscopy. Number two, pre proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Pre proliferative diabetic retinopathy starts when ischemia, uh, ischemic pattern starts in. When ischemia starts, uh, then what happens? The first sign of uh, pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy is venous torticity. It is a sign of ischemia, number one. Second is again uh, cotton wool spots. These are like cotton and if I ask you to define it, you, will say, you should say that cotton wool spots are damaged ischemic nerve fiber layer. That's it and it is also because of ischemia. Third sign uh, of uh, pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy uh, is dot uh, blot hemorrhages and the fourth sign is IRMA. IRMA are uh, malformed uh, blood vessels. These are sometimes confused with new vessels but they are different from them. Sometimes it dif becomes difficulty clinically to differentiate them and we perform uh, fundus fluorescein angiography to differentiate between the two in which uh, irma does not leak and new vessels leak. Stage number three, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Uh, now as ischemia is progressing, uh, uh, what happens? Uh, the retina uh, is harboring uh, the ischemic uh, 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 pattern and it is what what is the effect of this ischemia 
ischemia induces the production of angiogenic factors which in response creates new vessels on the retina especially on the disc which are called nvds that is new vessels at discs or nves that is new vessels elsewhere that is anywhere on the retina and uh, this is uh, a sign of uh, 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 third and last stage of diabetic retinopathy in which ischemia is has totally taken up uh, the eye and uh, the second uh, sign which may occur is uh, vitreous hemorrhage because patient may may be six by six even at the third stage uh, and uh, he might not have gone to eye specialist for any type of eye checkup and these new vessels are prone to bleed and suddenly suddenly when they bleed the patient may present to you with the vitreous hemorrhage so vitreous hemorrhage is the second sign of uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy these are the three stages of diabetic retinopathy the treatment depends uh, upon the stage of the disease and today i will stop here i would like you to remember and keep it in mind all these factors and uh, my this talk was in response to uh, what i uh, asked from my students uh, all over the world and from uh, uh, different uh, national and international institutes where my colleagues and my students work and they also uh most of them agree that basic things are to be remembered i am not or we are not uh, asking you to don't go beyond this but don't forget these important points thank you very much for listening come back soon with your negative or positive comments i am uh, in my continuous effort to uh, make it better and better Uh, in the coming days i will be delivering the total fully uh, integrated with learning objectives uh, lectures on different topics thank you for now